In this video, we're going to build off of what we were doing in the previous video, where we were using the Motion 2 plugin and its sliders to help control our easing. This time, we are going to apply the easing sliders in the Motion 2 window to text. I've taken a very simple bit of audio, a couple of versions of simple kinetic type. Let me show you what the first version looks like. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. I've mentioned in a previous video that a lot of what we are going to be doing is choosing how our graphic elements are going to enter the screen, what they're going to do while they're on the screen, and then how they're going to get off. You can see even in an animation as simple as this, that principle is still being applied. I call this type of transition a snap transition, just because it just snaps onto screen all of a sudden. There's nothing wrong with this. It can be fairly dramatic, and we'll talk about how it was done. But we're also going to take this simple animation and using the Motion 2 plugin, add a little bit of easing. So we get this. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. You can see here, again, the same principle applies. Everything enters the screen, does something, even if that something is just stay there and be seen for a little bit, and then exits the screen. What makes this animation a little bit more interesting is that we have a bit more variety in the way that these words are doing their entrances. Each word comes in in its own way and exits in its own way. Finally, we're going to take a look at this animation. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. This animation is utilizing after Effects 3D capabilities. Of course, we could go much further with our complexity, but this is a good place to start. Here's what I want you to do. Let's open up After Effects and create a new project. I'm going to come to the File drop-down menu and select New, New Project. I'm going to save that. Now, the first thing I want us to do is to create a composition. Let's come to the Composition drop-down menu and we're going to select New Composition. Let's make sure that we use the 1920 by 1080 pixel dimensions. And for the frame rate, I'm working at 29.97. I'm going to make the duration of this composition 10 seconds long, zero frames. And for the background, I've got this dark blue. I'm going to say OK. Now that we've got our composition created, let's import the audio that we're going to need. I'm going to come to the File drop-down menu, and I'm going to select from the Import Flyout menu, File. I'm going to navigate to this file, shortaudio.mp4. As you can tell, this file contains both the video and the audio content from a YouTube video. We won't be using the video, so we won't be breaking any copyrights. I'm going to say Open. That places this short audio mp4 file into our project panel. Let's drag our audio file down into our composition layer panel down below. You can see the length of this audio file is only six seconds. To the left in our layers panel, I can see an icon for the audio and the video of this file. I don't want the video, so I'm going to poke it in the eye. I'm going to either press my spacebar to play, or I can come over to my preview panel and click the play button this way. Either way, I want to listen to this audio file in this composition. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. There's nothing wrong with that file, although it begins right at the very beginning of my timeline. I would like there to be a little bit of space between the time the video starts and the time that we start to hear and see the words. So I'm going to click on this layer indicator for the short audio file, and I'm just going to click and drag it a little bit to the right. I'm going to bring that all the way back to just about a half second after the beginning of my timeline. You can see that there's zero seconds, there's one second, there is the half second point. Point. Again, I'm just going to bring that current time indicator back to the beginning and press play. Person. That seems like a good point to begin. The next thing I want to do is set my workspace. We talked about this gray bar in an earlier video. That is our work area slider. If I take my cursor and hover over the right edge, I can click and drag to the left to reset my work area. And I'm going to drag it to just after the end of my audio file. The next thing we need to do is create timeline markers for when each word is spoken so that we have a visual indicator of where we need to put our animation. 
Now, first of all, a timeline marker is created on our timeline by positioning our current time indicator where we want to put a marker and then clicking on this icon here on the right side of our timeline panel. By clicking on that once, I now have created a timeline marker. The one is the default label for this marker, but I can change it by double clicking on that marker and typing in something else. I can also move this marker back and forth so that we can position this marker to the point in the timeline where that word is being spoken. But how do you determine where you're supposed to put your markers? Now, there's a couple of different ways to do that. In an audio file like this, where each word is spoken individually with space in between, I could use the waveform, the visual representation of that audio file to show me where to put the markers. If I come to the short audio file in the Layers panel and click on the Disclosure triangle, and then click on Audio, and then click once more on waveform, you can see that I get this visual representation of the words as they're being spoken. For this file, this makes a lot of sense. However, if you had spoken dialogue that was happening much more quickly, it might be harder for us to read the waveform as simply as we do this one. In that situation, I would mark the audio like this. If I press the Command button on my keyboard, Control on PC, and then click and drag, on my current time indicator to the right, I will get a preview of the audio. It'll sound weird at first. The audio plays back in the same speed that I drag over it. If I go slow enough, I can discern exactly when that word is being spoken. And I can be very precise this way. I'm going to put a new marker right there by clicking on that icon. Double click that. I'm going to use the waveform for the rest of this because I can see just where those words are. I now have the markers for that audio file. If I preview that. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. Next, let's create our words. I'm going to come to the Layers drop-down menu, and I'm going to select New, New, text. And you can see I now have a cursor in the center of my composition and a new text layer here just waiting for me to start typing. And of course, the first word I'm going to type is person. I'm going to let you choose what font you want to work with, but I'm going to recommend that you make your font large enough in the screen to be able to read it clearly, but not so large that we can't do some animation with it. Let me show you what I'm going to recommend. I'm going to come over here to my toolbox and click on my selection arrow so that I can see the bounding box around my type. If I'm careful, I can click on the top right anchor point. I can click and drag while holding down the shift button to drag out a larger version of that type. Now that I have it a little bit larger, I can also see this a little bit better. The anchor point is currently situated here on the left edge of my type. That's not where I want my anchor point to be. This bears repeating. The first thing we always want to do whenever working with an object in animation, whatever it be, is to set the anchor point. The anchor point is always the point around which all transformations occur. For this, we are going to set our anchor point by coming over to our Motion 2 panel. And just next to the sliders, we see this set of icons. The anchor at the bottom gives us a clue as to what we are going to be doing. By clicking on that, you can see our sliders have become minimized, and we now have this anchor point proxy here that allows us to choose where we want our anchor point to be situated. I'm going to choose the center of our object by clicking once on the center point there. And you can see now the anchor point is now aligned with the center of the type. Let's align our object to the composition. I'm going to choose my Align panel. If you don't see your Align panel, come to the Window drop-down menu and select Align. You can see here that I'm aligning my layers to the composition, and I'm going to choose Center Align to bring that into the center of my screen like that. I'm now going to trim this new layer I've just created so that it occurs on the timeline only from the moment it's spoken to the moment that the next word appears on screen. This is really easy, as all I need to do is trim the red layer indicator. There's a couple of different ways I could do this. I could just take my cursor and hover over the left edge of that red layer indicator until I see this double-headed arrow, and then click and drag over top of it like this, thus trimming that layer to wherever I drag it to. And as you can see here, the that layer only becomes visible when the current time indicator is over top of that layer indicator, thus creating that snap transition that we were talking about earlier. 
where something just appears on screen. I could also trim from the right side by coming here and clicking on the right hand side of the layer indicator and dragging to the left. And I would drag this to the point where the next word comes on, which is woman. So I would drag it to about there. We'll do the fine editing a little bit later. I now have person. There I go. There is one thing I forgot to do. I'm going to change the color of that text by coming back over here to the characters panel and clicking here within the fill color swatch. And from the color picker, I'm going to choose the top left to make that white. There we go. Now that I have the styling that I want for this word, I can simply duplicate it by choosing it in the layer panel here, clicking on it once and pressing command D, control D on PC to duplicate that layer. And you can see, I now have something called person two. It's taken the text and duplicated it. And I have two layer indicators sitting over top of each other. I'm going to take this new one that I've just created, however, and click and drag it back along my timeline so that it's beginning aligns with the previous layers ending. I'm now going to take my current time indicator and drag it so that it is now over top of this second layer. This word now needs to be changed. I'm going to come over to my toolbox and click on my type tool click and drag over top of that word. There I go. I'm going to trim the layer indicator for this word because you can see that the next word comes in fairly soon. Again, we will do the fine tuning in just a bit. From this point, I'm going to duplicate this word again in the layers panel by pressing command D. Again, I'm going to take this layer indicator and drag it back along my timeline so that it's beginning lines with the previous layers end. Take my current time indicator and make sure that I'm over top of this layer because you might think you're over the correct layer, but make sure that you in fact are over the correct layer when you make this change. One thing we will have to do in just a moment is we are going to have to realign our anchor points to the centers of these words, which we will do in just a moment. I can see now that this layer indicator needs to be extended a little bit. Again, I'm going to Press Command D in my Layers panel. And finally, I'm going to duplicate the last layer exactly the same way. Now, the last thing I'd need to do here is I'm going to reset my anchor points for each one of these layers. As you can see, as I've typed in new letters, the anchor points no longer align with the center points. So to quickly do that again, nice and easy with the motion to panel. I still have the anchor point proxy up here. And again, I'm going to click in the center of my buttons and then align to the center of my composition. And I'm going to do that for each of these words. When I play this back, person, woman, man, camera, TV. Okay, so that is an example of our snap transition. Fairly straightforward, but there were still some things that we needed to do. In our next video, we're going to build off of this composition to add some more complexity using easing and the Motion 2 panel.